Hello, everybody. I'm Joe Bruno with Joe Bruno Bass. I have a YouTube channel, and uh, I've been on social media for maybe three years, live streaming, uh, playing all sorts of different bass stuff, different gigs, uh, usually live stream. Um, but I just joined this fretless bass channel, and uh, and I really love what y'all are putting on there. So what I thought is I would like to share some of my experience. My bass course, it's called Nostrum of Bass. Nostrum means like snake oil, you know, like a medicine that has no scientific formula. You know, uh, you know it's my version of I can help you be a better bass player. Well, I thought about it, and I first started playing fretless bass when I traded in my fretted bass. I had a beautiful 1964 jazz bass that was all hot rotted. And in 1978, I had just joined the Navy music program, got out of music school, had this great bass. And my great drummer roommate, Mike Battelato, turned me on to Weather Report. And, uh, my life was never the same. Uh, it was November 21st, I believe, 1978. I was playing at a Christmas party for the in Charleston, South Carolina. And uh, it, it was right before we went to the gig. He said, oh, check this record out. This is back when you had records and you put them, you know. Anyway, it was heavy weather. And he played the song a remark he made, and uh, anyway, here, let me, let me, for those of you that haven't heard, heard it yet, uh, this is the first notes of it, it's just beautiful. <laughs> to show you that if you are falling in love with fretless bass, you definitely want to check out the early weather report stuff. And also, you want to check out Joni Mitchell, Igera. And uh, I'm actually now playing in a Joni band, uh, which is called the, it's called Project Joni. And uh, we do Hygera. Of course, Hygera was recorded with Jocko playing two bass lines. Well, I can't do that. <laughs> Plus, it's in a different key. So I sort of reinvented uh, the bass line, and uh, it's, it's kind of it's kind of fun. What I did want to share with you is I'd like to y'all to look at this instrument like it's it's a bass. It's tuned in fourths. The notes are only in one spot, and the key to playing this bass is you have to look at it like you're singing. When you're singing, you're not like, are you singing like this, where you put your you know, finger in your ear so you can hear yourself? Or are you placing yourself into a chord, right? Um, when I sing, which I just started recently because I figured out I could do it by ear. Um, when I sing, I look for intonation. And uh, when I play fretless, I'm always looking for intonation. But I'm not looking down here. I'm looking here. So the key to my learning intonation started in 1981. After I got out of the Navy, I'm in a show band. And everyone has to smile and look at the audience. And, and the producer of the band, Ted Scorman, he's it's like, He's in there telling us, you know, how to stand and showing us all these dance steps. And, you know, we were in Orlando. It was just a real fun time. I was 24, 25. And uh, he said, and this it was a different bass. It was a Spectre fret, fretless, which I still have. Um, this is my new favorite. I've, I've had this one for 30 years. <laughs> this, is in, this is one of, uh, one of I believe, only one like this. Uh, it's an Ovation Viper. And it was built this way. And uh, they didn't even know they made it. So, uh, But I used to play this with Ringling Brothers for about a year and a half until I got my seven string. 
It went to, from fretless to seven string cold turkey. That's another story. Anyway, um, but uh, the, the whole key is Ted Scorman says, Joe, don't look at your bass. And he goes, Ted, it's fretless. I have to look at it. And he goes, well, then do you have a fretted bass? So after hearing that, I had been playing fretless bass for like three years at that point. And uh, I said, okay, I won't look. Guess what? It worked. I could play it. Didn't have to look because I'd been playing it as the only bass that I played. I played everything on fretless bass. That was the other thing I didn't mention. This wasn't my other bass. This was my only bass. And uh, I was playing uh, Navy every day. Uh, after I got out of the Navy, the week later, I'm on the road, six nights a week. That's all I did. Fretless bass, six nights a week, five hours sets. Five hour nights, five sets. Each set's either 40 to 45 minutes. So that was my practice room. So I put a lot of hours in. It's not hard to put a 1,000 hours of, of practicing on a bass like this. Now, um, I don't have my strap. If I had my strap, the bass would be here. Um, but anyway, we'll see how well I can do. My, my hands know exactly where the notes are. I, this is D. See, it's close. But if I have my strap on, you know, I, I kind of guessed at that. D is right. That's it. Now, the key to playing bass in tune is not squeezing the neck. Okay? See my thumb? It's barely touching the neck. Key to intonation is to just put your finger in the right place. Okay? See, I'm hitting two notes, and it sounds almost like one. Cool thing about the fretless, it doesn't have to be perfectly in tune. If it is, in my estimation, it doesn't sound as good. Fretless sounds good when you kind of you bend into the notes. If you look at this on a, on a, on a, a tuner, you'd see it go from flat to, to in tune. I learned this from Jocko. He said, you, you have to, your, your, um, your feeling comes from the tips of your fingers. Okay, some people play fretless ba bass perfectly. I won't mention names. And you listen to their records and they sound just perfect. That's not the fretless bass. Fretless bass is an expression of emotion. So uh, anyway, the Jocko story, that's another story. But uh, uh, so yeah, so I couldn't look at my bass. So there I am playing six nights a week, five sets, shows. I'm dancing. I'm doing all this crazy stuff. And I literally had my bass tied to my belt buckle. I had a string here and then my belt buckle here. And this way I could do crazy stuff with my bass. Okay, I could let go of it, and it would it, it, uh, the head wouldn't hit the ground. I could spin it around. I could play it backwards. I was in a show band, Vegas, baby, you know? So um, not everyone's going to go through that type of training. <laughs> so don't worry about the string on the, on the thing. It was uh, actually uh, inspired by Steinberger bass. The Steinberger just didn't feel right. It was too, it didn't have enough weight. And I like the weight of the neck. Anyhow, once you know where the notes are, then everything is perfect. Now, one thing that I do, though, is I learned when I was with Ringling Brothers to, uh, because I was playing in the dark, pitch dark, on a stage, reading music, so none of this was going on, and it couldn't go on because I wouldn't be able to see the neck. So I had to learn, relearn positions. So what I did is I used the positions that they used on upright bass. I noticed the, the symphonic players would always do like, like if they're playing something E flat or D flat, they do like this. They go bump, here. They do this, and then they do this, and then they do that. And then they'd be in D flat. And they're playing in what's called half positions, okay? So I play bass in half positions. Fretless bass. It's like an upright, just maybe that much shorter. Really, that's all. You measure the neck out with a half size upright, it's about that much shorter. And um, so you can pretty much play the same thing. I actually teach young kids how to play upright bass on an electric. And I teach them half positions with frets. Um, so playing down here, your fingers have to be further apart. And the higher you go, 
closer together they get. Not easy. It just takes time. And uh, yeah, I'm doing that with half positions. Much, much, much easier than this. Painful, right? This bass fits my hand really well. My specters fit really well. This is a specter I've had since the, about 27, 28 years ago. I got that. And I don't play it a lot. You know, I just take it out for fun. <laughs> like some people, some of you take out the fretless bass. So, uh, but I love, Jocko just really inspired me. I got to meet him, got to talk to him, got in his head, and that wasn't me, okay? I'm not Jocko, but I am loving the fretless bass, and I'm loving what he did with it. I just don't learn things the way he does. Right. He approached bass like a classical pianist approached piano. If you all know any or are married to any, you know what I mean. Right? They practice for 10 hours a day, nonstop, same piece of music, over and over and over again until it's perfect. And then they can go into concerts and play in front of symphonies and get 25, 30 grand for one piece of music. That's a classical pianist. Well, that's Jocko, okay, in a nutshell. Um, and if you want to be just like Jocko, practice, lots of practice, approach bass. Uh, you might want to check out Jeff Berlin. Uh, he is basically in the same wavelength as Jocko. So what I've done is I have learned to play the fretless bass like it's part of me. Try not to look at the neck because looking at the neck is kind of like looking at yourself while you're reading a book or something where you're looking at your lips saying the words, what's the use? It's not doing anything. All it's doing is taking your eyes off of where they should be, either the music, which is if you're reading, or if you're playing by ear, the audience, piano player's left hand, the leader, the cutoffs, whatever. You know, When people are doing this, it cuts off that you know, outer element, so to speak. Anyway, enough talking. So what I do is I just play whatever's in my head, goes from my head to my fingers, and that's it. The more you do this, it literally, you literally, if you want to practice, practice right from your head, eyes closed, and listen. If you all would like to explore playing fretless or any other bass, um, I've developed a technique using what I have learned over the last 40 years of playing, working with some great musicians. Um, subbing, that's what I do. Phone rings, I pick it up. Upright gig, doing top 40 requests with a jazz trio. That's uh, next weekend. One night, fancy hotel, lots of tips. All right, it's fun. Great players, it's a trio. Great drummer, great pianist. We're not allowed to sing but we have fun, and I do it on the upright. Same principles, no difference, but I can sight read. I can play with a bow. I did take a bowing lesson or two, but I literally use the same principle. Drinks are that far apart, not that far apart, <laughs> and uh, it's easy to play. It sounds wonderful. Got a pickup. Um, I've got gig playing um, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, you know, Bonnie Raitt, but with a wonderful girl singer next uh, next week. It was supposed to be tonight, but we got rained out. Uh, on this bass, in this seven string. I never look at that. I can. It took me five years to be able to look at it because it has these lines on the neck. Um, but yeah, all I can tell you is the more gigs you do, the more opportunities you have to practice, right? Because there's more than one way to do this. <laughs> That's another question. None of us play scales for a living, but it's nice to show your fingers where the notes are. Okay, that is one position. That's a real position. Doesn't hit all the notes, but you don't need them. That's the one that I like. That's the one that we teach, though. Not to see, I believe. Yep. See, I didn't even look. 
Uh, one thing I could do is uh, I could play Joni Mitchell tune. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna pause for a second. I'll be right back. I have to plug in the uh, iPad. Okay. <laughs> What I've done is I've put in the four changes into the iRoll Pro, and I just put them on repeat a bunch of times, and I just play along with it. Here we go. Starts off in C sharp. Minor. Here's a... Oh, man, what? Here it is. I have to put my head in another place here. Mm -hmm. Not sure I'm, the actual line that I usually play isn't in my head because normally when I do a Joni concert, there's rehearsals. I just did one a week ago and I already they already left. So here, but here here's something. Here we go. <laughs> things uh, never learn a lick guys if you do it'll haunt you for the rest of your life i learned that like 30 years ago and it, and it keeps coming out it's uh, it's fun to play but anyway that yeah so those are the uh the uh, Hyge song hygiera is um it's i forget the meaning because i'm old but it's a cool song and uh, you want to check it out it's beautiful it's got two jocko tracks in it and uh it's a great tune. So, uh, and you can also find Jocko playing it live with Joni. And uh, pretty much every time she would do something, it would be different. It would be totally different. I mean, you know, things would, they, uh, she'd have different musicians, so the songs would be different. So we literally learned one show using the musicians Jocko, um, Michael Brecker, Pat Metheny on guitar, and uh, Peter Erskine on drums. And uh, we don't have a percussionist, so the, our drummer Art plays conga and drum set at the same time. That's that's pretty fun. And, uh, and our guitarist Tony or John, they uh, um, they try to do the the Matheny. And uh, it's so versus a later on Joni after she really met Jocko and let Jocko kind of take things over, everything just came to life, and her music became its own form. It was like a different form of art. Her music is not music. You can't just, like, if you listen to her stuff, you'll listen to her guitar chords. She's got her guitars tuned. Um, I don't know if she came up with the tunings. I'm not sure who came up with them. But most of what she plays is two chords at the same time on the guitar. And all she has to do is put one finger down or two fingers, and then she goes like that, you know, moves them up. And, and on stage, Joni Mitchell has, I believe, 16 or 17 guitars. Our Joni, Joni Adno, our singer, she's wonderful. She uses, um, for a one-hour show, six guitars. And uh, plus, she has to tune those. <laughs> so, um, yeah, different tunings. Anyhow, um, nice chatting with you guys. And I uh, hope you uh, got a little bit of, I don't know, inspiration to maybe 
spend more time playing the fretless. There's nothing wrong with being the fretless bass player. I did it from 1978 until 2005, day before Halloween, right? Nonstop, fretless bass, that's all I played. I did get an upright along the way around 1992, I believe. I got my a really good upright and I just hung on to it. And, uh, but other than that, it was fretless or upright until 05 and I went to this. So now the fretless is not my main instrument. This is my money maker now. And, uh, but if this Joni project, project Joni does what I want it to do, this will be my real money maker. I love fretless bass. So uh, remember, no need to look. Just look inside, look in here, close your eyes, listen. Your fingers are wearing glasses if you just give them the chance to see the notes. And if you'd like to learn more about me, either DM me or you can send an email to this address. And uh, again, Nostrum of Bass. I have no college degree in bass. I, I literally had one teacher in the Navy School of Music who was a Marine, and uh, he got me practicing. I practiced 60 hours a week in that school because I couldn't read when I got there. And uh, when I get out, I could sight read. I literally could sight read in three months. So reading is, it's all up here, okay? Seven notes, seven letters, that's it. Yeah, there's flats and sharps, but who cares? When we were in the first, second, third grade, that's when we learned how to read words, sentences, nouns, verbs, syllables, right? Consonants, all those big words. We put it all together. We were just little kids. It wasn't rocket science. Neither is this. Everyone should be able to read with their fingers, not their eyes. Just look at the dots, read. Tabs, um, I use tabs for scales. I go like this, two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four. That's it, you're done, that, or this one. One, four, one, three, one, three, or this one. Um, yeah, and really just, just those. Oh yeah, and this one. Two, four, one, four, yeah, two, four, one, four, one, four. Okay, three, three taps. That's it. You learn those, you can solo. Wow, amazing. Anyway, Joe Bruno Bass, Bass Nostrum. You can see Joe Bruno Bass on YouTube at Joe Bruno Bass. And uh, I'm playing on YouTube with my wife, Christine, my cat, Lionel. Well, he sits back there and stares at me a lot on the videos. And uh, my 96-year-old dad, Joe Bruno Sr., who is a trumpet master, and we take requests. Check it out. Joe Bruno Bass. You can actually see us anytime. We've got over 1,000 live streams. And I, I live stream gigs. I'll be live streaming my request gig next weekend from the Don Cesar. I live stream on Sundays from Casariano with a five-piece jazz group with my dad. And, uh, and whatever. It's not perfection. It's reality. Okay? This is reality bass TV right here. The Nostrum of Bass, Joe Bruno Bass. See y'all later.